Welcome, welcome to the reading of Don Casmurro by Machado de Assis, one of the greatest Brazilian writers of all times. Read by Fabiano Oliveira, representing the channels Super Academico and Tapa Olho Azul. The title. One night, not long ago, as I was coming from the city of Engenho Novo on the Brazil Central, I ran into a young man from here in the neighborhood, with whom I have a bony acquaintance. He spoke, sat down beside me, talked of the moon and the government, ended by reading me some verses. The trip was short, and the verses may not have been entirely bad. It happened, however, that I was tired. I closed my eyes three or four times. It was enough to make him stop reading and put the verses in his pocket. Go on, I said, rousing myself. I've finished, he muttered. They were fine. I saw him make a gesture to take them out of his pocket again, but it did not pass beyond a gesture. He was offended. The next day, he said some hard things about me and gave me a nickname, Don Casmuro. The neighbors who do not like my taciturn, recluse-like habits, took up the nickname. It suck. It stuck. This did not make me angry. I told the story to my friends in the city, and they, in fun, call me by it and write to me, Don Casmurro, I'm coming to have dinner with you Sunday. I'm going to my old place at Petropolis, Don Casmurro. See if you can't tear yourself away from that cave in Genovo and come spend a couple of weeks with me. My dear Don Casmurro, don't imagine that you are going to escape my theater party tomorrow night. You can. Stay overnight in the city. I promise you a box of at the theater, tea and a bed. The only thing I don't promise you is a girl. Don't consult your dictionaries. Kazmuhu is not used here in the meaning they give for it, but in the sense in which the man in the street uses it, of a morose, tight-lipped man with John within himself. The dawn was for irony. It imputes to me aristocratic airs, all for the rinsing of. Well, I have found no better title for my narrative, if no better occur course. Let it stand. My poet of the train will not will know that I do not bear him a grudge. I do not bear him a grudge. And with a little effort since the title is his, he will be able to decide that the work is his. There are books which own no more to their authors, some not so much. Two, the book. Now that I have explained the title, I will proceed to the book. First, however, let us go over the motives which placed a pen in my hand. I live alone with one servant. The house in which I live is mine. 
I had it built specially to satisfy a desire that is so personal I am ashamed to print it. But here it goes. One day, a number of years ago, I decided to reproduce in Engenho Novo the house in which I grew up on the Rua de Matacavalos. It was to have the same appearance and plan as the other house, which had disappeared. Builder and decorator understood my instructions. It is the same tall structure with the three windows across the front, veranda at the back, the same rooms upstairs and down. In the living room, the decoration of ceiling and walls is more or less identical. Garlands of tiny flowers steady from space to space by the beaks of stout birds. In the four corners of the ceiling are the figures of the, the seasons and in the center of the walls the medallions of Caesar, Augustus, Nero and Messinesi with their names beneath. The reason for these personages eludes me. When we moved to the Matacavalo's house it was already decorated with them. They were from the previous decade. Perhaps it was the taste of that day to introduce a classical flavor and ancient figures in the American paintings. The rest of the place is in the same mood. I have a small state with flowers, vegetable garden, a seizure tree, a well pool and washing stones. I use old china and old furniture. And now, as formerly, there is the same contrast between the life within, which is tranquil, and that without, which is noise and restless. My purpose was to tie together the two ends of my life to restore adolescence in old age. Well, sir, I did not succeed in putting back together what had been nor what I have been I have been if the face is the same the expression is different if it were only the others that were missing no matter a man consoles himself more or less for those he has lost but I myself am missing and its lack it's essential. What is here may be liked to die on her and bird. It barely preserves the outer habits. As they say in autopsies, the inner structure will not take die. A certificate stating that I am 20 years old might deceive a stranger. Like any forgot document, but not me. The friends I have left are the recent dates. The old ones have all gone to study the geology of holy ground. As for my lady friends, some date back 15 years, others less. And almost all believe in their own youthfulness. youthfulness. Two or three would have others believed in it, but the language they speak often obliges one to consult a dictionary, and such intercourse is wearying some. Still, a different life does not mean a worse life. It is just not the same. In certain respects, that old life now appears stripped of much of the enchantments I found in it. 
but it has all, also lost many a spine that made it painful. And in my memory, I keep some sweet and charming recollections. Now I go out little. I seldom talk to people, rare distractions. Most of my time I s is spent working in the garden and reading. I eat well and I do not sleep badly. But as everything is everything wearies on one, this monotony to finally exhausted me. I wanted change. What if I wrote a book? V jurisprudence, philosophy and polit politics suggested themselves, but they did not bring with them the necessary energy. Then I thought of writing a story, a history of the suburbs, something less dry than the memories of Padre Luis Gonçalves dos Santos concerning our city. It would be a modest work, but it would demand documents and dates as preliminaries. A long due business. It was when that the busts painted on the walls spoke to me and said that since they had failed to bring back the days gone by, I should take my pen and tell over those things. Perhaps the act of narration would summon the illusion for me, and the shades would come treading light, as with the poets, not the one on the train, but the one in Faust. Ah, there, are you come again, restless shades? I was so happy with this idea that the pen still trembles in my hand. Yes, Nero Augustus Massinissa, and it though great Caesar, who insists me to compose my commentaries, I thank you for your advice. I will put on paper the memories that come crowding. In this way, I will relieve that what I have li lived, and I will strengthen my hand for some work of greater scope. Let us commence the vocation with the notable afternoon in November, which I never forgot. I had many others better and worse, but that one never faded from my spirit as you will discover by reading. 3. The Information I was about to go into the living room when I heard my name mentioned in his behind door and hide behind door. It was the house on Rua de Matacavalos, the month November, the year, the year is a trifle remote, but I am not one to change the dates of my life just to please those who do not like old stories. The year was 1857. Dona Gloria, are you going ahead with your idea of putting our Bentinho in the seminary? It's high time, and even now, there may be a difficulty. What difficulty? A great difficulty. My mother wanted to know what it was. José Dias, after several instants of hesitation, came to see if there was anyone in the hall. He did not notice me. Went back and lowering his voice, said that the difficulty was in the house close by, the Padua family. The Padua family? I have wanted to say this sometime, but I didn't have the courage. 
it doesn't look right to me for our Bentinho to be always getting into corners with the daughter of old Turtleback. And this is the difficulty, for if they should start making love, you'd have a struggle on your hands to separate them. Oh no, getting into corners? It is a manner of speaking, whispering secrets, all is together, Bentinho almost never leaves the place. The girl is a scatterbrain. Her father pretends to, uh, not to see. He just as soon things went so far that I understand your gesture. You don't believe that there are people so calculating you think that everyone has a frank open nature but senhor josé dias i've seen the youngsters playing and i have never seen anything to make one mistress their age alone bentin is barely 15. capitu had her 14th birthday last week there are two babies, don't forget, they were brought, brought up together ever since the big flood ten years ago when the Padas lost so much. That was what started our intimacy. And am I to believe, brother Cosmic, what do you think? Uncle Cosmic answered with uh, oh, which translated into the vulgar tongue meant José Díaz and his imagination. The youngsters amused themselves. I amuse myself. Where is the backgammon board? Yes, I believe that you are mistaken, sir. Perhaps so. God grants that you are right. But believe me, I spoke only after much careful observations. In any case, the time is drawing near, interrupted my mother. I must see about entering him in the seminary as soon as possible. Good. If you have not given up the idea of making him a priest, that's the main thing. Bentinho is bound to comply with the wishes of his mother, and then to the Brazilian church has a noble destiny. Let us not forget that a bishop presided at the Constituta Assembly, and the Padre Feijó governed the empire. Governed like a, the fool he was, cut in Uncle Cosme, giving away to old political rancors, political rancors. Beg pardon, doctor? I'm not defending anyone. I'm merely citing cases. What I want to say is that the clergy still plays a big role in Brazil. What you want is a caput. Get the backgammon on board. As for the boy, if he has to be a padre, of course it's better for him not to commence saying mass behind doors. But look, sister, is it really necessary to make a priest of him? It's a promise. It must be kept. I know that you made a promise, but a promise like that, I don't know. I believe that when you come to think of it when you come to think of it what do you think cousin justina i the truth is that each one knows best of himself continue uncle cosme god is the one who knows what's best for all is still such a promise an old promise made so many years ago but what is this 
sister Gloria. You are crying? Oh no. Oh now, is this anything to cry about? My mother blew her nose without answering. I believe that cousin Justina rose and went to her. There followed a deep silence during it, which I was on fire to go into the room. But another great force, greater force, another emotion. I could not hear what Uncle Cosmo was saying. Cousin Justina was comforting my mother. Cousin Gloria, Cousin Gloria. <laughs> José Dio was excusing himself. If I had known, I would not have spoken. But I spoke because of my respect. And I esteem because of affection. To perform an unpleasant duty. A most unpleasant duty. End of chapter 3. To be continued. Thank you for listening to this reading and continuing to keeping up with the channels Super Academico and Tapa Olho Azul. Please subscribe to the channels, give like, comments, and share the videos. Till the next part of the reading, bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.